Hi, uh, this is Jason. Uh, we're looking at Fox's Book of, Book of Martyrs, and we're looking at part two, and we're looking at uh, the first persecutions under Nero, AD 67. The first persecutions of the church took place in the year 67 under Nero, the sixth emperor of Rome. This monarch reigned for the space of five years with terrible credit to himself but then gave way to the greatest extravagancy of temper and to the most atrocious barbarities. Among other di diabolical whims, he ordered that the city of Rome should be set on fire, which order was executed by his officers and guards and servants. While the imperial city was in flames, he went up to the Tower of Martians, played upon the harp, sung the song of the burning of Troy, and openly declared that he reached the ruin of all things before his death. Beside the noble pile called the circus, many other palaces and houses were consumed. Several thousand perished in the flames, were smothered in the smoke, or buried beneath the ruins. The dreadful configuration continued nine days when Nero, finding that his conduct was greatly blamed, and severe odium cast upon him, determined to lay the whole upon the Christians at once to execute himself and have an opportunity of gluttoning his sight with new cruelties. This was the occasion of the first persecution, and the barbarities exercised on the Christians were such as even exercised in the commiseration of the Romans themselves. Nero even refined upon cruelty and contrived all manner of punishments for the Christians that the most internal imagination could design. In particular, he had some pseudo in the skins of wild beasts and then worried by dogs till they expired and others dressed in shirts made stiff with wax fixed axle tresses and set on fire in his garden in order to illuminate them persecution was general throughout the whole Roman Empire but it rather increased than diminished the spirit of Christianity the course of St. Paul and St. Peter were martyred Uh, the Emperor Domitian, who was naturally the second persecution under Domitian in AD 81. <coughs> the Emperor Domitian, who was naturally inclined to cruelty, first slew his brother and then raised the second persecution against the Christians. In his rage, he put to death some of the Roman senators, some through malice and others to confiscate their estate. He then commanded all the lineage of David to be put to death. Among the numerous martyrs that suffered during this persecution was Simon, Bishop of Jerusalem. Without renouncing his religion. A variety of fabricated tales were during this reign composed in order to injure the Christians. Such was the infatuation of the pagans that if famine, pestilence or earthquake afflicted any of the Roman province, it was laid upon the Christians. These persecutions among the Christians increased the number of informer, informers and many, for the sake of gain, swore away the lives of the innocent. Another hardship was that when any Christians were brought before the magistrate, a test oath was proposed when if they refused to take it, death was pronounced against them, and if they confessed themselves Christians, the sentence was the same. Pon um, Nicodemus, a benevolent Christian of some distinction, suffered at Rome during the rage of Domitian persecution. Potassius and Gervius were martyred at Milan. Timothy was the celebrated disciple of St. Paul and Bishop of Ephesus, where he zealously governed the church till AD 97. At this period, as the pagans were about to celebrate the feast called the Catagonian, Timothy meeting the procession severely reproved them for their ridiculous idolatry, which so exasperated the people that they fell upon him with their clubs and beat him so dreadful a manner that he expired of the bruises two days afterwards. The Persecution Under Trajan AD 108. Nerva, succeeding Domitian, gave a, a respite to the sufferings of the Christians, but beginning reigning only 13 months, his successor Trajan in the 10th year of his reign, AD 108, began the third persecution against the Christians. 
while the persecution range Pliny, a heathen philosopher, wrote to the emperor in favor of the Christians, to whose epistle Trajan returned in this inclusive, indecisive act. The Christians ought not to be sought after, but when brought before the magistrate, they should be punished. Trajan, however, soon afterwards wrote to Jerusalem and gave orders to his officers to exterminate the stock of David, in consequence of which all that could be found of the race were put to death. Fosius, bishop of Pontus, refusing a sacrifice to Neptune, was by the immediate order of Trajan cast first into a hot lime kiln and then thrown into scalding bath until he expired. Trajan likewise commanded the martyrdom of Ignatius, bishop of Antioch. The holy man was the person of whom, when an infant Christ took, it, took into his arms and showed to his disciples as one that would be a partner of humility and in innocence. He received the gospel afterwards from St. John the Evangelist and was exceedingly zealous in his mission. He boldly vindicated the faith of Christ before the emperor for which he was cast into prison and tormented in most cruel manner. After being dreadfully scourged, he was compelled to hold fire in his hands. At the same time, papers clipped, clipped in oil were put to his sides and set on fire. His flesh was then torn with red-hot pincers and at last he was dispatched by being torn to pieces by wild beasts. Wow. Trajan being succeeded by Adrian, the later continued this third persecution with as much severity as his predecessor. About this time, Alexander, Bishop of Rome, with his two deacons, were martyred, as were Quirinius and Hernes, with their family, Zeno, a Roman nobleman, and about 10,000 other Christians. That's at the martyrdom of Fastines and Jovinus, brothers, citizens of Bessinica, their torments were so many, their patience so great, that Coleserus, a pagan, beholding them, was struck with admiration and exclaimed in a kind of ecstasy, Great is the God of the Christians, for which he was offended and suffered a similar, similar, similar fate. Many other similar cruelties and rigors were exercised against the Christians until Quadratus, bishop of Athens, made a learned apology in their favor before the emperor who happened to be there, at, and Astrides, a philosopher of the same city, wrote an elegant epistle which caused Adrian to relax his severities and relent in their favour. Adrian, dying in AD 138, was succeeded by Antonius Pius, one of the most amiable monarchs that ever reigned, and who stayed the persecution against the Christians. The fourth persecution under Marcus Aurelius Antonius, philosophers, a strong pagan, the cruelties used in this persecution were such that many of the spectators shuddered with horror at the sight and were astonished at the intrepidity of the sufferers. Some of the martyrs were obliged to pass with their already wounded feet over thorns, nails, sharp shells, and upon their points others were scourged till their sinews and veins lay bare, and after suffering the most excruciating torture that could be devised, they were destroyed by the most terrible deaths. Germanicus, a young man, but a true Christian, being delivered to the wild beasts on account of his faith, behaved with such, a, such astonishing courage that several pagans began became converts to a faith which inspired such fortitude. Polycarp, the venerable bishop of Samaria, hearing that persecutions were seeking after him, persecutors were seeking after him escape, but when but he was discovered by a child after feasting the guards who apprehended him and he desired an hour in prayer, which being allowed, he prayed with fervency that his guards repented that they had been instrumental in taking him. He was, however, carried before the proconsul and burnt in the marketplace. Twelve other Christians who had been intimate with Polycarp were soon after martyred. The circumstances attending the execution of this venerable old man as they were of no common nature, so it would be injurious to the credit of our profession, professed history of martyrdom, to pass over them in silence. It was observed by the spectators that after finishing his prayer at the stake, to which he was only tied, but not nailed as usual, as he assured them he should attain immovable, the flames on the kin kindling the faggots and encircled his body in like an arch without touching him, and the executioner on seeing this was ordered to pierce him with a sword, when so great a quantity of blood flowed out, extinguished the fire.
but his body at the instigation of the enemies of the gospel, especially Jews, was ordered to be consumed in the pile and the request of his friends who wished to give it to Christians rejected. They nevertheless collected his bones and as much of his remains as possible and caused them to be decently, decently interned. Metrodorus, a minister who persecuted boldly Pionius, who made some excellent apologies for the Christian faith, were likewise burnt. Carpus and Papelius, two worthy Christians, and Agathonia, a pious woman, suffered martyrdom uh, at Pergamalius in Asia. Felicitius, an illustrious Roman lady of considerable family and the most shining virtues, was a devout, shining virtue was a devout Christian. She had several son, sons whom she had educated with the most exemplary piety. I just lost my place, uh, I'm just trying to find it. The principal of these martyrs were Vetius Agathus, a young man, Plandinia, a Christian lady of weak constitution, Sancticus, a deacon of Vienna, uh, red hot plates of brass were placed upon the tenderest parts of his body, Piblius, a weak woman, once an apostate, Atalus, a Pergamus, Apotheus, were venerable, the venerable bishop of Lyons, who was 90 years of age, 